Good morning. Coming up on GMA on this morning after the Super Bowl, we will have all the reactions to the big game and Rihanna's halftime show. And we'll hear what some of the players have to say about the game. Plus, the search for three objects the government shot out of the sky over the weekend, less than a week after taking down the Chinese spy balloon. Also, NFL star DeMar Hamlin, 101 with Michael, and his first interview after his terrifying on-field collapse. Those stories and much more coming up right here on GMA. All right, a lot of reread talk this morning and still ahead in our next hour of GMSA. More Rihanna as her return to the stage brought out more than just fireworks for the Super Bowl halftime show. What we've learned about her surprise announcement. And Valentine's Day is almost here. We've got some creative, fun ways to surprise your partner. And taking a quick look at TransGuide traffic cameras, things looking pretty smooth out there. Stephen Cavasso is tracking the roadways for us. We'll be right back. You saw right there, for the second time in four years, the Kansas City Chiefs are on the top of the football world. The highlights from an exciting Super Bowl 57 coming up in your morning headlines. And the players weren't the only ones putting on a show. Of course, we got Rihanna's return to the spotlight, plus a surprise reveal from the singer that everyone's talking about. And it's a post Super Bowl Monday, taking you outside with a look at live cam. Things starting off a little slow, but uh, Mike is going to tell us about this roller coaster weather week coming right up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good Monday morning. It is February 13th, also known as the day after the Super Bowl. Maybe a lot of people recovering this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be one of those days people just like throw the sweatpants on, yep. run to work. If you're actually, I know a lot of people take it as a vacation mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> hey, a third happy. story, yeah. And, you know, and we're you. talking about the uh, uh, third string quarterback. Yep, yep. C -team. We're, we're happy that you are here, RJ. Well, I appreciate being here with you guys, yeah. And Mike as we're, well. Yeah. We're the wise as far as you're concerned. I wouldn't say day after Super Bowl. I'd say Valentine Eve. Oh, yeah, there we go. And now we're focused on Valentine's. <laughs> Got to focus on Valentine's now. You need to yeah. do a little shopping do, today, yeah, don't you? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> You want to skedaddle right now when the store is open? <laughs> anyway. How's it looking uh, outside, Mike? <laughs> as RJ indicated, yeah, we do have another roller coaster coming up this weekend as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, beautiful view of the skyline. We have a lot of clouds hanging around here, though. Still holding at 43. The cloud cover is acting like a bit of a blanket. We're not going to be dropping down maybe a degree or two in the next few hours. 35 Kerrville, 51 Canyon Lake, and 42 right now in Seguin. Mold is the only thing showing up in yesterday's pollen count. No mountain cedars. I think we're finally done with that season. And throughout the rest of the morning, most of the cloudy skies, peak or two of sunshine is going to try and squeeze on through here. We'll warm up through the 50s into the uh, mid 60s, low to six, low 60s, pardon me, by noon, then get up into the mid 60s and top off at 70 later on today. Again, leaning more toward the cloudier side, a little bit of sunshine thrown on in here. Then we get into tonight and a couple of sprinkles. I wouldn't get really excited about rain chances late tonight, early tomorrow morning. There's just going to be a, a few of them out there. We do have a couple of fronts moving on through here. The first one actually will warm up in behind it. Then the next one we cool down behind that one. I'll tell you when those come about and what's in store for the upcoming weekend. Never too soon to look forward to the weekend. <laughs> Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything going on, sir? Not a lot over here, Mike, and that's great. Post Super Bowl Monday, or post Super Bowl weekend, and of course, uh, Valentine's Day Eve for all of you that have to make the trip to the store. Nothing going on. It's really going to slow you down just yet, but uh, keep in mind we've just entered 6 a.m. So things are going to start to pick up out on the roadway. Uh, just watch out I-10 West Avenue. We're starting to see a little bit more activity out there, but let's get you to the map. We do have a stall vehicle that was reported here off Loop 410 Southbound at Old Pier Soul Road. It's really not causing any issues, but I do want to remind you, check your vehicles before you get out there this morning. The commute is going to get a little bit busier as we get closer to morning rush, but right now things are quiet for now, but let's get you to those travel times. If you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments, 28 minutes along, <clears throat> pardon me, 37 northbound heading in from Pleasanton, about half an hour usual drive time from US 90 eastbound from Castroville, and that arrival from Lytle should be within about 17 minutes. So again, roads are quiet for now, but we're gonna continue to watch them closely and have those updates on road closures. There's a lot happening this week. We'll have that coming up in the next few minutes, guys. 
Thank you, Stephen. Right now we're staying on top of late breaking news in far west Bear County. Crews are on the scene of a house fire that left behind a lot of damage. Katrina Weber joins us live from the scene. So Katrina, where are you and what have you learned? Well, this is the 300 block of a street called Cardinal Way. We're not far from Petranco Road, and we're pretty far outside Loop 1604. But this is the house that was involved. The last of the fire crews here uh, right now, just making sure that everything is okay. The house, not so okay. Uh, firefighters tell me there's pretty extensive damage inside of that house. There also is some damage to a backyard fence from the fire. Now, there were two people inside. They got out safely. But how this fire started, that's still the big question. Uh, we have the fire marshal, the Bear County fire marshal, who is coming in to take a look and try to figure out exactly what caused the fire. Now, out here in the county, that's the investigative unit. That doesn't necessarily mean that anything was suspicious or wrong here, but the fire marshal will be taking a look around to try to figure out how this started a little bit after 4.30 this morning. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. New this morning, a Super Bowl party ends with a person shot on San Antonio's west side overnight, and it happened just after 11 p.m. near the area of West Cesar Chavez and San Luis. San Antonio police say officers found a man on the ground with a birdshot shotgun wound on his leg. Police say it happened during what appeared to be a backyard cookout. However, no one was cooperating with officers. The man was taken to the hospital. His condition hasn't officially been released. Also this morning, a woman was taken to the hospital after being shot in a car near downtown by Travis Park. San Antonio police say it happened along East Martin and Taylor Streets. The woman was taken to Bamsey with a gunshot wound to her shoulder, but it's expected to be okay. Now to some of your top stories this morning. Morning headlines. Today marks one week since the devastating earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria. More than 36,000 people have been confirmed dead, and now authorities are targeting the contractors who built buildings that collapsed. ABC's Rena Roy brings us the details. This morning, authorities in Turkey are targeting more than 130 people with ties to the collapsed buildings that crushed thousands of families as they slept. Dozens of arrest warrants have been issued for contractors and other workers. At least two property developers have been arrested at airports accused of trying to flee the country. The Justice Ministry here has formed an earthquake investigations unit that will look into deaths and injuries among residents here. And it will be an enormous task when you consider the scale of the destruction. Thousands of buildings destroyed across hundreds of miles. As the staggering death toll rises, new stories of hope as rescuers pull more survivors from the rubble. This baby saved 107 hours after the quake is now in good condition. Rescuers also finding 17 year old Asya, who spent nearly seven days trapped beneath this building. Through the mangled rebar, they pulled her to safety. One, two, three, another group counts, pulling 10 year old Cuddy through a hole cut in the floor. In another town, nine-year-old Semi is placed on a stretcher while asking, can you bring me strawberry ice cream? As the rescue effort turns to recovery, a humanitarian crisis is unfolding with a cholera outbreak in Syria and an estimated five million people left homeless. UN officials say a hardline group in the war-torn country is now delaying international aid. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And back here at home, we're continuing to follow local efforts to help people in Turkey and Syria after that deadly earthquake. The Raindrop Foundation sent donations through the Turkish embassy in Houston on Sunday. They're continuing to collect things like baby formula, heating elements, and monetary donations to help survivors of the quake to rebuild their lives in this year's after that tragedy. Ferhat Ozturk says he knows about these types of recoveries after the quake in 1999 in Turkey. He hopes what they will send here will show the people of Syria and Turkey that they're not alone. Our help, hopefully, they will be able to, with our humanities help, we will be able to, you know, um, help them to invigorate what they have, you know, what they had before. And so far, the Raindrop Foundation has raised more than $800,000. Their goal is to raise $1 million, and we have a link on KSAT.com where you can donate to the organization Embrace Relief.
Well, for the second time in four years, Kansas City Chiefs fans are celebrating that Super Bowl win. Of course, they beat the Philadelphia Eagles in that yeah. nail-biting 38-35 win for Super Bowl 57. Tough loss for our guy Max Massey here, our in-house <laughs> Eagles fan. Uh, it was the second straight Super Bowl decided by just a field goal with a lot of twists and turns along the way. NFL star and league MVP Patrick Mahomes was named Super Bowl MVP, winning his second title in four years. The Chiefs Chiefs were down 10 at halftime, but came out swinging in the second half, scoring on every drive in the third and fourth quarters. And while both teams lit up the scoreboard, Rihanna fans were the biggest winners of the night, getting to see her return to the stage for the first time in four years. So she made a grand entrance dressed in a head to toe red jumpsuit and flew high over the field at State Farm Stadium in Arizona. And unlike the halftime shows in recent years, Rihanna's was almost a one-woman show. Riri revealing a baby bump, simultaneously announcing a pregnancy and becoming the first pregnant woman to headline a halftime show. She and her performers performed on elevated platforms while Rihanna sang a number of her hits, including We Found Love, Rude Boy, Work, Only Girl in the World, and Umbrella. RJ, you were saying mm. it was a total of 12 songs on that list. 12 hit songs in a 13-minute set. And I find it interesting because she, leading up to the Super Bowl, she had said, I'm going to have a special guest with me. And then this is basically what she meant. <laughs> Smart woman. Baby number two on the way. Congratulations. It's, it's, it's 610 and 45 degrees. And speaking of the Super Bowl still to come, Michael Strahan has two big Super Bowl interviews coming up this morning on Good Morning America, including a one-on-one -on -one with DeMar Hamlin. You don't want to miss what he has to say. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. And looking for a healthier alternative to sugar. After the break, some of the best ways to sweeten up your life without sacrificing your health. And taking a live look outside with live cam on a Monday morning. Things looking pretty good out there, but we are expecting a little bit of changes in the temperature as we get through another work week. Well, are you tired of using traditional refined sugar in your coffee or in your cooking? The good news is that there are other options to sweeten up your life. And this morning we are talking about some of the healthier alternatives. First, let's talk about honey. Honey is a natural sweetener that contains antioxidants and vitamins. It also has antibacterial properties that make it a great alternative to sugar in tea or on toast. Next, there is maple syrup, which real maple syrup is made from the sap of a maple tree and is a great source of vitamins and minerals. It's perfect for drizzling on pancakes, such I had yesterday, waffles or yogurt. Just make sure to avoid the fake syrup that's actually just flavored corn syrup. And how about some coconut sugar? Coconut sugar is made from the sap of coconut palms and has a low glycemic index. It's great in baking and can be used as a substitute for brown sugar. So there are many health al healthy alternatives to sugar that you can try. Give them a chance and discover which one works best for you. Yeah, maple mm. syrup is good for like granola if you don't oh, want to put added good. sugar. Yeah. yeah. But just like load on the maple mm. syrup. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and maybe people looking for some healthier alternatives after Super Bowl weekend. Steven, how'd it go for you out there? Super Bowl party, get togethers. Um, you know, just a few people over. I really don't want to talk about this too much <laughs> because it's a sore subject. I didn't bring my cavachos in yeah. today. There was nothing left, I promise. But you know, on the subject of sweet stuff, roads are looking pretty sweet, so we'll switch over there. 1604 there, uh, traffic's off to a pretty quiet start post Super Bowl weekend. Really uh, just seeing traffic moving along without any trouble. Of course, we have our fair share of stalled vehicles out there, so check your vehicle before you get out on the roadway. Uh, nothing's really going to slow you down this early in the morning. US 90 at Medio Creek, you can see just uh, it's getting a little bit busier minute by minute. But watch out because, again, we do have our fair share of stalled vehicles. Loop 410 southbound at Old Pearsall Road. That's all still being reported by TechStop, but it's not causing problems for drivers in that direction. So again, be on the lookout as you get the commute rolling this morning. Wide look at the map really doesn't show anything out there, so we're going to see some construction. Let's talk about what's taking place here along US 281 on the north side of San Antonio. We will have bridge work take place on Wednesday, February 15th, and that will take us to the end of the work week, Friday, February 17th. 
keep this in mind. It starts at nine in the morning, so this is really going to be in the thick of morning rush because crews get out there pretty early. Should wrap around three in the afternoon. We'll see alternating lane closures in both directions right there at Overlook Parkway. Plan your commute ahead of time. Scan the QR code that is now on your screen that takes you to our KSAT traffic page. Mentioned this earlier, I updated the list of closures on our website. So again, get in the know before you have to go. Nothing really is going to slow you down this early in the morning, though. No issues to report. Major issues as of yet. You were talking about honey? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Warm biscuits and honey. Mm. Ooh, yes. That like sound. jalapeno of biscuits? Yeah. Oh, I love just, a jalapeno just, biscuit. Just, just plain old biscuits with the honey <laughs> drizzle on top. Yeah. 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 Can't go wrong with that. Delicious stuff. With butter. Making us all hungry. No, with butter. Not that healthy, but. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, heading out this morning, grab a jacket. It is definitely chilly out there, and we are going to be dropping down maybe another degree from where we are right now. Plenty of clouds, and we're going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. It's also going to get somewhat breezier. Wind out of the southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour, and the wind is definitely going to be increasing, especially in the overnight hours. Jacket this morning, you won't need it this afternoon, all the way up to 70, and it's going to be kind of shorts and flip-flops the first part of the week, and then it's mm. going to be heavy jackets the latter part of the week. Yesterday, beautiful, beautiful sunrise out there. Thank you very much for uh, that picture, and we've got a, a good-looking view of the skyline as of right now, but... Not uh, not going to be the most beautiful sunrise. There are a couple of sprinkles that are showing off, showing up out to the west. However, the air is very, very dry. Temperatures out to the west are in the uh, 50s. Dew points are down in the 30s. So a lot of this would be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. We are at 43 right now, 40 in Balverde and 47 down the road in Divine. Got some clouds hanging around here this morning. There's those couple little sprinkles that computer models are picking up. But again, the majority of that is going to evaporate before it reaches the ground. And like I said, we keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. A little bit of sunshine thrown on in here. And then we go into tonight and rain will start to develop as we get into the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. But again, this is not going to be any big deal as far as rain. Just if anything here in town is going to be enough to make the roads kind of damp and that'll be about the extent of it. And then the front's going to continue to work its way on through here. Things are going to be clearing out. We'll have partly cloudy skies by the afternoon and it is going to be very windy. Wind advisory has already been issued, goes into effect at midnight up until noon tomorrow for the hill country. Obviously, it's going to be windy elsewhere, but these are where some of the strongest winds are going to be and that's going to start to pick up again in the overnight hours. Also, not only are temperatures, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to do a roller coaster, but so are dew points. So we've got warmer, more humid air coming in here today, and then dew point drops off with a front tonight, but it's still going to be even warmer tomorrow. That dry air and southwesterly wind really going to heat things up tomorrow. Then the humidity comes back up on Wednesday. Then it really drops back down again as we get the next front moving on through here. And that next front is going to be bringing in much colder air. So here's this low, which is going to work its way across the area. It stays too far to the north to do anything to, for us. Gives us those westerly winds. Very warm. The next low, which is going to stay, unfortunately, too far to the north of us, this one's going to pull down that front and pull in some colder air. So that will cool us down for then Thursday, throughout the day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we warm right back up, preceding that next low, which is going to move on in here. Looks like sometime by the first part of next week, but that one's starting to kind of cut off by itself and those things are like a spinning wheel on mud. You get no traction and kind of sit out there. Very hard to determine what they're going to be doing. 62 today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. Plenty of clouds hanging around here today. 70 high temperature. So it will be very warm. And then tomorrow, very mild start. 60s only. And then we get up to 75 degrees. We drop down Wednesday morning because of that drier air, but even hotter in the afternoon, approaching 80. The next front moves through. Temperatures will drop throughout the day on Thursday, much cooler throughout the afternoon, windy on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then back to 70 by Sunday. We are all over the map, Mike, <laughs> yep. with our temperatures here. Just keep a Valentine's Day forecast. Just keep it there. Yes, that is yeah. going to be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to that. Already know. made plans. Both of you? Yeah. Okay. I got plans. Oh, yeah. Well, I, need to finish. I need to just wrap some things up. Oh. So, so much. I, yeah, I got plans. I swear I got plans. All wrapped up. Right yes. Well, I, I know. I, I know. You, you, you know, you're on top of it.
Yeah, our time is temperature here, 621. You have no faith in RJ, huh? No. Yeah, All right, wow. just, okay. just ahead, the <laughs> NFL season might be over, but football still sticking around thanks to the XFL's debut. We'll look at the San Antonio Brahma's first matchup that's happening next Sunday. And taking a live look at the roads with trans guide Stephen Cavazos following our post Super Bowl traffic. We'll be right back. Type 2 diabetes? Discover the Ozempic Trizone. Oh, Ozempic. My Ozempic Trizone, I lowered my A1C, CV risk, and lost some weight. In studies, the majority of people reached an A1C under 7 and maintained it. Ozempic lowers the risk of major cardiovascular events, such as stroke, heart attack, or death, in adults also with known heart disease. And you may lose weight. Adults lost up to 14 pounds. Ozempic isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't share needles or pens or reuse needles. Don't take Ozempic if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrineal plasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Ozempic and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Ozempic with the safonal urea or insulin may increase low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Ask your health care provider about the Ozempic Trizol. You may pay as little as $25. In this morning's GMA First Look, Michael Strahan's all-access Super Bowl interviews. Did doctors ever come to you and say, you know, this could have gone another way? First, Michael's going one-on-one -on -one with Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin on his remarkable recovery, made even more poignant by this moment at last night's game. Buffalo Bills safety, Damar Hamlin! And then... All about Rihanna. A lot of your fans, you know what they want. More. More. <laughs> they want they want more. They want a new album. They want new music. Yeah, I know. Can you can you update us on that? Before her showstopper, she opened up to Michael about performing once again in front of all of the lights. One morning, two big interviews. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL season has wrapped up, so it's time to switch over to the debut of the XFL. San Antonio fans who may have missed the Commanders have a new team to cheer for, the San Antonio Brahmas. The team has been working out up north in the Dallas-Fort Worth area this season, but they will be playing their home games at the Alamo Dome. This past week, head coach Heinz Ward and the players came down to San Antonio to meet fans over at Alamo Beer Company. We asked Coach Ward what he picked up from the two head coaches that he played for in his NFL career with the Steelers in Bill Cower and Mike Tomlin. I just learned so much from them and, and the approach to the game and the mindset. So me being in Pittsburgh for so many years is all I know. So I've seen success. I know what it looks like. And now getting the opportunity to one, learn from two great coaches, but also put my own style and flavor to it. So um, that's why they say I'm a player's coach, because <laughs> I know what it feels like to have dead legs <laughs> at practice. So sometimes you got to listen to your body. You got to pull back a little bit. And I've done that. And they've been so appreciative of that. And it, it's helped our team uh, kind of get to where we want to go. So I told them my job is to make sure I get them to the party. And now when it's time to, when they're at the party, it's time to show out and, and let the fans know all the hard work that they put into is going to pay off. So looking ahead, the Brahmas will help kick off the new XFL season this Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Alamo Dome when they host the St. Louis Battle Hawks. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. A lot of people excited about the Brahmas debuting the XFL. Very exciting. It's 627, 45 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. A fourth unidentified object was shot out of the sky over the weekend. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the security concerns for the U.S. A far West Bear County family gets a middle of the night wake up call courtesy of a fire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Firefighters say the damage wasn't limited to their home. I'll have that story. See Katrina in a well, park there because it's 44 degrees at 631. A chilly start to our Monday after the Super Bowl. Mike will have our kind of roller coaster forecast for us in just a bit.
And it is the day after the Super Bowl, Fre February. <laughs> so, yeah, the, he did have here. coffee this morning. <laughs> I did. But I was about to say, people are probably going to need a little extra coffee this morning to kind of get them going today. I think we need a reward, RJ, because mm. we stayed up, we watched the Super Bowl, and then got Those up at 2.30. The, I the saw the that. So, hey, yeah. don't tempt me. With go, the, go grab a couple. So, <laughs> did you stay up? For the whole game? Uh, like a little, maybe like till 8.30 or so. Okay, just first half. And then yeah, I woke up at like so. midnight and was like, oh, who won? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised actually that uh, to read yeah. this morning that the Chiefs won. Right, when you so, go to bed and, yeah, and yeah. it was a halftime and the Chiefs were not looking so hot. And Yeah, and with Mahomes' ankle and didn't know if he was going to be coming back. But anyway, yeah, it is all history. Sorry, we got a little of uh, a bad little glitch right there. I don't know if you can see it right now. Oh, yeah, we can. Big time there. So anyway, 43 degrees here in town. Uh, 37 is the dew point. So relatively dry air. And we've got some temperatures. Can we just take these graphics full as that possible? Possible, so folks can see all these numbers on here. We are in uh, at the low 40s here in town right now and got some 30s in portions of the hill country. Going to get our little technical problems fixed here in a second. Mold is on the low side. No mountain cedar is showing up, which is good news, although you know it's to follow oak pollen. Mostly cloudy, chilly this morning and then throughout the rest of the afternoon. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around, make it up to 70. A couple of showers are going to be possible late tonight. I wouldn't get really excited about rain chance as though one or two of those little sprinkles left over tomorrow. Again, it's not going to be a big deal. Some leftover clouds, very warm and very windy tomorrow. We're going to make it up into the mid and even upper 70s. Even warmer on Wednesday, then another cold front. So literally we go from t-shirts and shorts and flip-flops back to heavy coats by the end of the week. Weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? My turtlenecks are ready for the end of the week, Mike. Let's get a quick look around town. 281 and Hildebrand. Things are moving along now. That morning rush, uh, we've entered that early start of it. US 90 at Medio Creek, uh, one of the busier spots in town where we tend to see a lot more traffic picking up out there. 281 at Encino Rio. Really, uh, thankfully, the morning commute has been off to a quiet start, even though we're getting a little bit busier now. And that could be because a lot of folks may just be waking up. Maybe it's a Super Bowl and join the, the, the morning after. Hopefully, a lot of Chiefs fans out there. but. We know San Antonio is all about the Cowboys. All right, uh, really quick mention here. We do have a crash that was reported on the far west side of San Antonio or near Loop 410 State Highway 151. We'll have to get a closer look from our friends at Transguide, but at, as of this moment, we're not seeing any delays in terms of congestion or any other issues that are being reported right now. Just plenty of construction, and we can expect the roads to get a little bit busier. One last look around town, 35 at 37. Things are moving, and again, we'll get an update on that crash that was reported on the west side of San Antonio, but for right now, the morning commute is off to a decent start. RJ Sarah. Thank you very much, Stephen. A fire has forced two people out of their home in far west Bear County. It broke out before five this morning. Our Katrina Weber is live on a street called Cardinal Way. That's outside of Loop 4, 1604 near Petranco Road. Katrina, did everyone make it out okay? Yeah, both people made it out safely. Uh, can't say the same for their home because there's a lot of damage here. We still have firefighters here. They've been here since a little bit after 4.30 this morning, uh, and they're still just making sure it's out. Let me give you a look at the video, though, so you can see the heavy response that we had out here. Quite a few fire units were uh, out here a little bit earlier this morning, knocking down that fire pretty quickly. The firefighters say that the damage wasn't just limited to the house. There was also a backyard fence that has some damage as a result of this fire, but they did keep the fire from spreading to these houses next door. These houses are pretty close together. Again, there were two people inside when the fire broke out. They both made it out safely, but where they go from here is still a question because, again, firefighters say that the house does have heavy damage. They will have the fire marshal coming in to try to figure out exactly how this fire started. Not a, necessarily a sign of anything suspicious, but just uh, the fire marshal will be in investigating the cause of this fire. Reporting live in Far West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a mobile home fire that claimed the life of a four-year-old child in Southwest Bear County. This was a scene just yesterday morning on Shepherd Road, not far from Fowler Road. When crews got there, the mobile home was fully engulfed in flames. They quickly learned someone was trapped inside, but the fire was too intense to get them out. Deputies were uh, with the Bear County Sheriff's Office were also involved in that ongoing rescue effort and uh, they got injured as well. We have a deputy who suffered uh, burn injuries and two were treated, transported and treated for smoke inhalation. 
Two other people who live in the mobile home made it out and were taken to a nearby hospital for severe burns. Investigators say a fryer is to blame for a fire at a Sonic restaurant on the city's west side. So this happened yesterday morning on Protranco Road near Loop 1604 Military Drive West. We're told an employee was operating the fryers when the fire broke out. Firefighters got it out quickly, but the kitchen was left with extensive damage. The location will be closed while they make repairs. Other stories we're following closely this morning, the U.S. military shooting down another high altitude object. So this one was over the Great Lakes in Michigan. It's the fourth object shot out of the sky by U.S. fighter jets in just eight days. ABC's Ike Igoji has the latest. This morning, new security concerns after the U.S. military shot down a fourth unidentified object flying over Michigan's Lake Huron. We continue to assess uh, every threat or potential threat unknown that approaches North America uh, with an attempt to identify it. Senior administration officials say the octagon-shaped structure was unmanned, traveling above Michigan's Upper Peninsula on Sunday at only about 20,000 feet near sensitive sites, far lower than other recent objects brought down. No early indication of surveillance capabilities on this latest object. President Biden giving the order to shoot it down out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of military leaders. This latest incident coming just one day after an F-22 fighter jet shot down an unidentified unmanned object over the Yukon. U.S. and Canadian officials ordering it shot down. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Canadian and American fighter jets were scrambled uh, and an American F-22 successfully shot down the object. Another unidentified object was shot down on Friday off the coast of Alaska. Three separate incidents in less than a week since that Chinese spy balloon was shot down off the coast of South Carolina. But senior U.S. officials say these latest three are different from that spy balloon. None appear to have a payload and all are smaller. There's a bit of a we won't get fooled again going on here. It doesn't even mean that there are more of them. We're just looking for them and so we're finding more of them. U.S. officials are looking for the wreckage shot down in the Yukon, but the ice and weather conditions are hampering their efforts. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. February is Heart Health Month, and heart health is something families around the country, around Texas, and around San Antonio should take seriously. That's right. So in case you missed Leading Essay yesterday, Dr. Don Huey with UT Health San Antonio joined us on Leading Essay to talk about the importance of heart health and to what to watch out for. Yes, Dr. Huey joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about what to look out for, risk factors, and how San Antonio has a serious issue that we need to address. But it is American Heart Month, so take a listen to our conversation. It can include things that are fun, such as hiking, running around with children or grandchildren, just anything that gets your heart rate up. Um, the recommendation is to have 150 minutes a week, so that would be about 30 minutes uh, over five days of moderate to intense activity. Um, heart healthy diet is very important. Again, things in moderation. It's okay to eat red meat um, and, you know, occasionally fried food, but in general, you want to try to avoid those. Focus on vegetables, fruits, and lean meats. We have leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So we'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Max. Meanwhile, being a firefighter in EMT is a tough job that calls for perfect communication skills. That's why Kirby Firefighter says people underestimate her. Constance Garner says severe hearing loss. She has severe hearing loss, but thanks to the state of art technology, she can save lives just as well as other first responders. She says general hearing aids wouldn't cut it. That's why she got a cochlear implant with a device called Baja. If I take it off, then there's a screw and it's connected to the bone inside your skull. Move my hair out the way, clip it back on. There you go. Wow, so that implant has her hearing at 100%. Constance now plans to get her advanced EMT certification this year as well, as well as her Class B license so she can start driving the fire engine. She also wants to get her master's degree and eventually make captain, then chief. You can read more about her story 
on KSAT.com. You go, girl. Yeah, absolutely. Constance, thank you very much for the work they're doing out there in the Kirby area, the, the fire department out there in that, in that area taking care of us. So it's taking a look at our time and temperature right now, 44 degrees, 641 on your Monday morning. Are you listening to this? Uh oh Valentine's Day is almost here, RJ. It's tomorrow. So after the break, some creative, mm -hmm. fun, last minute ways maybe to surprise your partner that may beat the traditional flowers and chocolate. Okay, now is the time to show your significant other some love. All right, we have some tips this morning, some ideas to surprise that special someone. And first up, consider a couple's Look cooking class. Dance. Very cool. There. <laughs> this will let you spend some quality time together while learning how to make a new delicious dish. All right, next, you could try a surprise weekend getaway. Those are always fun. Plan a spontaneous trip to a nearby city or scenic location here in Texas for a memorable adventure. And even if you stay here in the San Antonio area, there's plenty of new things to do and see and discover together. You could also try a personalized gift. Think about creating a custom photo album. Google and other companies make it easy to create photo books that don't cost a lot, but can help provide a nice way to preserve memories. Handwritten love letter is also a great way mm. to show your appreciation or try a fun activity, spend the day together, like trying something like rock climbing, what? Or even going for a nice walk or run. We have a complete list of where you can celebrate Valentine's Day in San Antonio on ksat.com. Rock climbing, not romantic to you? No. <laughs> My husband and I, we've made um, Valentine's Day boxes. Remember what we used to uh, make yeah. in elementary yeah. school? Mm -hmm. That's a fun little cute craft. Scavenger hunts. Those are pretty popular. Okay. I like doing those. Okay. Then those are the best. <laughs> <laughs> Mike just gave me a weird yeah. look. <laughs> um, Steven. What, what's going on? Actually, you have an well, incident out in the road I mean, right now. you guys have to toss to the single guy over here. I mean, <laughs> yeah, listen, you take it away. The only thing on my, my plans uh, for tomorrow, just some possible and And obviously to be here to keep you updated on the traffic, but things aren't looking good out here, guys. State Highway 151 off Loop 410 East. We do have a crash that was reported, actually. It's our first one of the morning, and you can see that we do have first responders out there, and it's a pretty busy spot. A lot of folks make their way along State Highway 151, usually in the eastbound lane, so this crash is really causing an impact in the westbound lanes right as you approach loop 410 check out that buildup that we are seeing out there watch out as you get the commute rolling this morning thankfully uh, we aren't seeing any other issues that are being picked up just a little bit more of that congestion and we can really expect that to continue to take over our map now that we've entered morning rush so uh, just prepare yourself and again watch out here along loop 410 on the west side of san antonio because tonight we will see some barrier work take place and it should wrap on valentine's day that's tomorrow so nine in the evening to five in the morning single southbound main lane closure from medina base road to ray ellison boulevard but that information is on our website kset.com traffic but right now traffic here along state highway 151 west seems to be impacted at this time i haven't seen any updates on closures but I'm going to keep a close eye on that. Hopefully there'll be a better update in the next few minutes. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And to the man who's always prepared for Valentine's <laughs> Day, Mike starts warning people like two, three weeks in advance. I, we find it our, our public mm -hmm. service that we, you know, alert yeah. the guys out there. So as we were talking about That's last good. week, it's always fun to, uh, when you go to the grocery store, like, Scramble. This afternoon or tomorrow, and all the, the guys lined up. And I'd love to put the narration of a National Geographic mm -hmm. to oh, that. Like, oh, yeah, that'd be fun. As you see the male of the species, <laughs> as they gather together for the <laughs> annual. <laughs> anyway, um, don't forget, guys. <laughs> Yesterday, gorgeous day. It started off really, really pretty. And then obviously the clouds moved on in here and that kind of helped to keep temperatures down a little bit. We had a really cold start, got down to 33 yesterday. By the way, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And this morning you can see clouds hanging around here as well. A little squeeze of uh, sunshine trying to come on through and that's going to be the situation throughout the day. We're also looking at these few little sprinkly showers that are being picked up on radar. Now a couple of them just to the south of Catula slightly and I'm slightly heavier, but the air is really, really dry. So we've got 43 here in town, 54 in Catula, and then the dew point is 10 degrees lower than that. So I think a lot of this may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. There could be a, a little bit of a sprinkle uh, out in portions of the hill country, but I wouldn't really count on it. I think most will evaporate before reaching the ground. 45 at uh, 8 o'clock this morning, and then we're going to make it up to 62 at noon today. Again, a lot of clouds, a little bit of sunshine. That's going to be the situation in 
in through late this afternoon will top off at 70. And again, it's going to be kind of breezy with that southeasterly wind that continues to pull in the humidity pull in warm air and that's going to set the stage for a couple of more showers. But again, I wouldn't get really excited. Here's those couple little sprinkles showing up on computer models this morning and then it's just basically going to be mostly cloudy, a little bit of sunshine here and there in the overnight hours is when we start to see some of these sprinkles. Again, it's not going to be a big, big deal at all. This is basically as the front moves on through here and then we'll clear out somewhat in the afternoon tomorrow. Now it is going to be extremely windy tomorrow, so wind advisories go into effect at midnight up until noon tomorrow for the hill country and obviously it's going to be windy around here just no formal wind advisories posted here's the uh, low down here to the south and west of us and this is going to kind of take a little movement up further to the north so it's really not going to do that much good as far as any rain just a couple of sprinkles then on the heels of that we've got another low moving in here it stays too far to the north of us but this one's actually going to pull down uh, a cold front there's a front moving through tonight but it's basically just one of those pacific fronts so so it will dry the air out somewhat for tomorrow, but we're going to get some good westerly winds and that's what's going to help to heat things up tomorrow as well as on Wednesday. Then that bigger cold front comes through 62 today at noon 70 high temperature today, mostly cloudy skies. A couple of those little sprinkly showers around here then in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning, then we'll clear out somewhat and for Valentine's Day, just making a emphasis on that uh, tomorrow. Good looking day 75 degrees 78 on Wednesday front moves through overnight. I think temperatures drop throughout the day. Thursday will be warmer in the morning than we will in the afternoon. Very windy again on Thursday and stays chilly Friday, Saturday, warm Sunday. Thank you, Mike, and thank mm -hmm. you for your yearly reminder. Public service announcement there. <laughs> <laughs> Time right now is 651 and 44 degrees outside. We got to <laughs> Tomorrow on GMSA, police departments across the country are now using trained mental health professionals to respond to 911 mental health calls. So, does it work? We'll hear from both sides of the discussion. And a quick look outside with live cam. Things looking pretty good to start your work week. We'll check in with one more last time with Stephen Cavasso traffic and Mike Oser with weather. All right, time check. We're approaching 655. Still big problems here, unfortunately, along State Highway 151 near Loop 410. You can see we have those flashing lights out there. Not a good situation now that we're in morning rush. Be on the lookout, folks, because this is along State Highway 151 westbound, which is why we are seeing that buildup as you approach Loop 410. Other than that, we're going to start to see a lot more of that congestion out there on the map, but still plenty of green out there. Just remember to drive safe. No other issues to report as of yet, Mike. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Sun's trying to squeeze through in a couple little spots. Also, one or two sprinkles are being picked up on radar. Now, the air is fairly dry out there. I think a lot of that's evaporating before it reaches the ground. There may be one or two down to the uh, southwest and west this morning. 43 here in town, and we've got uh, basically mid-40s all around the area. We're not going to be dropping down too much more from where we are right now. 62 at noon, 70 high temperature, so it is going to be on the warm side. Wind out of the southeast, kind of breezy, and then wind really picks up overnight. A couple of showers overnight early tomorrow. I wouldn't get excited about rain on Unfortunately, even warmer tomorrow, warmer still, downright hot on Wednesday, approaching 80. Then a stronger front moves on through here, and that's going to knock temperatures back down into the 50s for highs all the way through the end of the week, going into Saturday, and then Sunday back to 70. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I know that uh, Max Massey is hurting right now, but we're in for Max today. Our condolences to you, Max. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be okay. Yeah. He'll, be He'll be just fine. fine. And, and we all know where RJ's headed this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. GMA is next. We'll be back here at 9 a.m.